For round four of the Blancpain Endurance Series, we're at Spa Francorchamps. It's the 64th running of the total 24 hours of Spa. There is, as ever, a huge crowd here to watch the action. The sun is shining, there is a 66 car grid, and it promises to be a fabulous race. For the teams, they were busy even on Wednesday. As the annual parade into town took place, a chance for the cars to drive first around the circuit, and then on the public roads into the town of Spa. That in turn gave the fans, both young and old, a chance to get up close and personal with some mountain watering machinery. There are 12 different brands represented on this year's grid of the Spa 24 Hours, and there were Porsches, Ferraris, McLaren, BMWs, Lamborghinis, amongst others, pouring into the town, much to the delight of the fans. from the multi-million euro car park, there were autographs to be signed, posters to be collected and photo shoots for the drivers. There was also the serious business for the head of the drivers and the annual drivers briefing where the race director Eduardo Freitas and the championship promoter Stefan Rattel addressed the drivers. McLaren drew a lot of attention, the cars promised to be quick throughout the weekend. And then it was back to the circuit for the teams. A serious business begin the following day. The cars are on the grid for the total 24 hours of Spa. David Addison and Hayley Copson here looking forward to a great race. And on the grid with Hayley is Bas Linders. Baz, unfortunately you've been issued a drive-through penalty. How are you going to deal with that to start the race? Well, of course, it changed our strategy because the moment Marcus Bartel has to get into the car, um, he needs to do it within the three laps. Uh, he needs to do a, a stop and go. So he needs to come in, stop, and then go again. We will lose around 50 seconds. So because we mark points after the six-hour marker, it's really important for the championship we, we mark points. So Marcus will not drive until six hours at least. So Maxime will do a double stint, I'll do a double stint, then Maxime again a double stint, and then normally we should mark us in. If really push comes to shove, we might even do the first 12 hours with two drivers. It's not just about racing here at Spa this weekend. Faithless are in town for the concert this evening, and that means that on the grid is Maxi Jazz. Maxi, welcome. What a beautiful day to be here. I bet you wish you were behind the wheel of one of these fantastic cars. How did you know? <laughs> yes, I really do. I can't wait for it all to get started and uh, just watch the drivers going for it. But you haven't been able to get no sleep last night. Excited about I it. Got quite a bit of sleep actually. Showed Fontaine Hotel, best beds I've slept in for a very long time. Well done, guys. Excellent. Wonderful. Look forward to seeing you later at the concert. Me too. Thank you very much. Enjoy. A 66 car grid, a record breaker for an all GT3 grid. And down on the grid is the promoter of the championship, Stefan Rattel. Stefan, a spectacular event and a record breaking event as well for SRO. Yeah, record number of cars, record number of brands, record number of drivers and sunshine. So I think it's all looking very good and we're heading for a very good race. Thank you. One of the winners of last year's 24 Hours of Spa, the Belgian driver Greg Franchi. Last year he was driving an Audi, this year he's changed camps, he drives the BMW. Greg, here we are once again. How do you feel you're going to do here? You took the win last year, you took the win of the championship last year. How are you feeling about this particular race? Hey, for the race, uh, starting Poland first, we have a good position for, for the race. I try to, to have the same position in the, in the end of the race. Uh, it's magic, 24 hours, it's by a lot of people uh, this year. And uh, the car is uh, quick, very quick. And uh, my teammate also, and I'm very prepared for this race. See. Thank you. So the grid is formed, the track is dry, the grid based on the time set in the qualifying session on Thursday. 
top 20 shootout, the Super Bowl on Friday, had to be cancelled because of appalling weather conditions. And it means that we have Frank Heckler going up against Maxime Martin on the front of the grid, Alvaro Perrant lining up third fastest in the best of the McLarens. Other drivers to watch, and there are so many through the grid, will include the Brock Pound CEO, Mark Hayek, whose Lamborghini lines up seventh. We've got the Zolder 24 hour double winner, Tim Verbeck, Aston Martin lining up 10th, number 89. And another car to watch will be the 62 McLaren. Adam Christodoulou starts in that. Certainly a car to keep an eye to. 13th on the grid is number 6 Audi of the Le Mans winners. Andre Lotterer, Marcel Fassler and Mr Le Mans himself, Tom Christensen. Eight times a winner. And they're all making their GT3 debut at the Spa 24 hours this weekend. The pace car sets off. The two BMWs at the front of the grid follow suit. And as the grid graphics scroll through, you can see not just the variety of cars, but also this who's who of GT racing. 235 drivers set to take part in this race. 66 cars ready to do the start, although one, the Audi of Philippe Albuquerque, is sitting in the pit lane. It wouldn't fire up when it was time to leave the pit lane, so that will have to start from the pit, last of all. There's another car with a problem on the grid. Look, one of the McLarens not getting away. It looks like the Stephen Jelly driven Van Ryan Racing McLaren. Everybody dodging around it. Hopefully that car can fire up and get going before everybody else goes by. I think it's on the move, just about. The Ferrari 430 there, and Giacomo Puccini, pole positioning class, goes through shot. And yes, the McLaren gets away, so everybody is moving. And this is Frank Keffler's view on the way up towards Le Camp. BMW Z4, very much the car to have at the moment in GT3 racing. He starts on pole, Maxime Martin will be alongside him. Third on the grid, Alvaro Perez, then the best of the Audis lining up fourth on the grid. with Alton there going through in the Harry Bo Porsche, one to watch for sure. And Ben Schneider at the wheel of the Jones Brothers Mercedes. More traffic working its way up towards Nikon. You can see the great variety of car that we have in this total 24 hours of Spa. And the drivers now making their way down towards Brussels, weaving around, as you can see the Porsche there in the hands of Olivier Clark, trying to get some warmth into the tyres. Frank Keckler starting on pole position. Now you've heard Baz Liners talk about this stop-go penalty for Marcus Paltela. That has been issued to him because he improved a practice time during one of the earlier sessions on Thursday under a yellow flag. He was betting in brakes at the time, apparently, but he still went quicker. Now, the net result of that is that he must take that stop go within three laps of being in the car. You also, in this race, get points, not just at the end, at 24 hours, but at 6 and at 12 as well. You're on board with Maxime Martin behind the wheel of the car in question, the number three Mark VDS Racing BMW. But if they can keep Marcus Paltola out of the driving seat for over 12 hours, then they are improving their chances of taking the maximum points on offer at 6 and at 12 hours. Jaguar there, another car to watch, being developed and improving all the time. Car being started by Gabriele Glardel. The track is dry, there's the forecast of rain, and you're riding with Christopher Meese and the number one Audi. He's going to be a man to watch as well, the former GT3 champion. So the car's now working their way through the Paul Frere corner, and they'll get themselves in the 2x2 Noah's Ark formation any moment, ready for the start of the race. The grid girls have done their work. They're now in the pit lane, ready to enjoy what promises to be a superb fourth round of the Brock Pan Enduring Series. Andre Lothra here, 13th on the grid, weaving around, trying to get some warmth into the rubber. And Lothra, winner this year and last of the Le Mans 24 hours, is certainly going to be one to watch. And with him, Marcel Fassler and Tom Christensen as the drivers of that car, it could well be the winner come four o'clock tomorrow. So through Blanchiment, the field working its way then up now towards the bus stop. The race divided into four classes. You've got the Pro Cup, the Pro Am Cup, the Gentleman Trophy for the bronze and silver graded drivers running together, and a Cup class for the older machinery dominated by the earlier model of 997 Porsche. That means there are going to be four great races within one as the cars now work their way to the bus stop. Frank Keckler on pole position. Now, is he going to be able to make a good getaway here and keep Maxime Martin behind him? There's the rest of the field. You can see just how big the grid is. Strung back all the way towards the fourth red corner. In fact, beyond that, through campus, there are cars still coming. Out of the bus stop, then. 
past the Formula One pits. This is where the race will end, but the race starts when they come out of La Source and go past the so-called endurance pits down towards Eau Rouge, the traditional start of the race. There's one of the Ferraris going into the pit lane in the background. That could possibly be 51, because that car has got Tony Valando at the wheel, who also has to make an early stop go. So I suspect that that car is also going to start from the pit lane because they'll get the stop go now out of the way, then he can just go into the race. We are about to go racing then as the cars come out of the source. The pack stands watch on then as the cars blast up towards the line when the lights go from red to green for 24 hours of Spa for 2012. Will be go. The race is on now. Which of the BMWs will make the best start? A good getaway by Frank Keckler. Look at the background. Nico Verdonk in the McLaren squeezing past to go forth as they dive through the Deux Rouge. But Maxime Martin goes round on the outside. A great getaway. Maxime Martin, does he lead coming out of the corner? He does. It's Martin ahead of Keckler as the cars power uphill for the first time. Maxime Martin leading the way. You're on board with Uber Alton carving his way through traffic in the Porsche. Charging up the inside. Alton gaining places as Parent goes third, keeping Verdonk at bay. Peter Cox is fifth at the Lamborghini. And then sixth is Christopher Meese as they come through Le Corn for the first time. Brilliant sight as this massive grid pours through, and the cars now then work their way down towards Bruxelles through the right hander. It's Maxime Martin leading the way, and he's trying to pull away from the rest of them. It's not going to be easy, so to do, because he's got the very quick Frank Heckler, the pole man, going after him. Third is the best McLaren in the hands of Alvaro Perez. Fourth, McLaren, Verdon. Fifth, Lamborghini Cox. Sixth, the best Audi. That's a Christopher Meese driven car. And then everybody else queuing up to be sandwiched because they pour downhill for the first time. Maxime Martin trying to get away in the car that's won two out of three rounds of the Broad Pound Endurance Series this year. And the sister car in the hands there of Mike Hesmond goes diving up on the inside of Pedro Lamy as they go for the pit path. But Lamy in the McLaren, the car crashed in qualifying by its owner, Carrie Moje, just hangs on to the place. Hesmond on the tail of Lamy as they go up towards the Paul Frere corner. Field working its way through lap one. And up front, Maxime Martin it is, Belgian driver for a Belgian team in a Belgian race who leads the way. Through Belgium, up towards the bus stop on the end of lap one. On board with Peter Cox and the Lamborghini, he's chasing Nico Verdon. Down to the bus stop they come. 225 kilometers an hour, stand on the brakes and go down to 50 kmh, turn right then left and up past the pits. Over the line, the BMWs first and second work their way through. and the bus stop in front of the Ferraris being forced wide and two cars already making their way into the pit lane. A couple of early pit stops, there are more with stop go penalties amongst them Duncan Tappy for example in the ART Grand Prix run McLaren, it could be another one to get out of the way early so you do your stop and you must concentrate on the rest of your stint. Pockets of cars developing their own battle so as they accelerate up through Radion. Maxime Soule in the blue and white Pro Speed Porsche you saw trying to make a move there. Martin leads the way, Keckler almost hidden his second, Perez third, Verdon fourth, is he? Yes, just, and then Peter Cox, you're riding with him, turns his way into Le Combe, going after the McLaren. Christopher Meese runs next, but Audi with Alpson for Porsche, Sule for Porsche. Bertrand Baguette, at the head of the next queue of cars, and the Gulf liveried Aston Martin, he's going strongly. On board with Meese then, down towards Brussels, Peter Cox ahead of him in the Lamborghini. Down towards Paul, the black Haribo Porsche of Uber Alton starting to creep up onto the back of the Audi of Christopher Meese. That's going to be a car to watch in the hands of Alton, a former winner of the Spa 24 hours. And this battle between Lamy and Hazelmans continues. The McLaren is still ahead. The BMW can't find a way through. Paul down towards the pith path. Hazelmans there lining up to have a go. Pedro Lamy covers the move. And Jamie Campbell-Walter, who was really impressive in the dark qualifying session on Thursday night, he is going really well at the moment, albeit he's got a traffic jam of cars tucked up behind him. Race leaders working their way up towards the end of the lap, and Maxim Soule's Porsche right on the tail of Gouba Alps, and there are battles developing right the way through the field. 
You've got some cars that qualified well, but are being driven in this first thing by a slower driver, so they're dropping back. You've got others that didn't qualify so well, but are now carving their way through the order. They're trying, you saw going through the Mercedes. And Olivier Pla has picked up damage in the Porsche. Somebody's had a bite at the back of the 911. A replay of drama coming here through campus. That was Poon Vauters being tapped into a spin by Jochen Habits in the BMW. The Mercedes off backwards into the gravel. Now the car was pulled out of the gravel. And Habits is in the pit lane. A punctured front left tyre. That is going to be a long stop. The team there to do the first part of the pit stop, the refuelling. And only when that is done can they then change the tyre. Two part pit stops operating the championship. Part one is the fuel. Part two is to get the car jacked up and change the tyres. There's somebody else with a problem here, look, it's the quick Irishman, Matt Griffin, a bonnet catcher's broken on the brand new m -Tech Ferrari. That is going to really cost him in a straight line, it'll lose him up to 10 kilometres an hour of straight line speed. Olivier Paris, the number 10 Ferrari, goes through, the former Monaco Grand Prix winner. He shares that car with, amongst others, the French footballer, Fabien Barthez. A replay of Adam Christodoulou diving for the pit lane and cutting across the front of Andre Lotra. That has damaged the number six Audi. It's also damaged the McLaren, having bounced off the arm code. This is Lotterer's view. Have a look. Comes into the bus stop. Christodoulou on the outside of Ben Schneider suddenly dives across. Bang. Swipes the Audi. Well, Lotterer wasn't coming into the pits, but he is now. He limps in, and the crab-like McLaren, with a lot of damage done, is limping in as well. Somebody else in trouble has been Frank Heckler because just ahead of him was this incident that ended up with the Lorenz Frey driven Jaguar being turned around. Heckler breathes in, goes for a gap on the inside and squeezes by. Jaguar back into the race. The car started by Gabriele Gardel. It's been developed all the time. Now we've got some cracking racing out on track at the moment. Uwe Alton is in the midst of all of this, as oft is the case, and he's looking to try to put a move on Edward Sandstrom's Audi. A lapped Porsche in the way, dives to the inside of Mira Kanopka's car and Alton gets past the back marker and gets past Sandstrom as well. That was really brave stuff going into Nicole, but Uber Alton goes by. He picks up a place, the Porsche running in the Pro-Am class. He's ahead of the Pro Cup Audi and Alton is working his way further and further up the order. Wolfgang Ulrich and Pierre Giudone look on in the pit bunker to see what's going on out on track for their cars. Coming into the mix also now is the number 16 Audi of Frank Schnippler. Stefan Ortelli is getting ready for his stint. Let's hear from Pierre Giudone. Yeah, we just saw you having a chat with Stefan. What's going on? Well, he's going next into the car, so we were talking strategy also. Some rain is expected. Uh, Within the next uh, 20 minutes or so, it's very hard to predict, but uh, we get uh, we get prepared for whatever may happen. With Alpson coming up towards us now behind, there's a really good McLaren battle. The orange McLaren there is Eric van der Poel, and right up behind him is Alvaro Perrin, the former Formula Renault 3.5 and British F3 champion. Perrin makes his move on the inside, almost alongside. They touch, they both get sideways, they both ride the curb, but van der Poel comes out in front. Flirting with disaster there, the two McLarens survive, but only just, and Peter Cox is right up behind them in the Lamborghini now. We've got a Porsche here with smoke billowing out of the back of it. In fact, we've got a Porsche here on fire. It's the car of Eric Dermott heading into the bus stop. An engine has let go in spectacular fashion. He goes for the pit lane. Back on track is the recovered number six Audi. The Porsche comes down the pit road now with smoke and flame billowing out of the back of it. He's put oil down. Rejoining his Vanderpool, rejoining his Peter Cox as well. Two spinners at the bus stop. You can see the line of oil just on the apex. Everybody trying to drive across it now, but it's making one or two run wide. And a big sideways moment for Tom Coronel's BMW. Into the pit lane comes the flaming Porsche. The Pro GT by Almera team on the scene to put out the blaze. That, I fear, is the last we're going to see of that car in the race. The engine failure pretty spectacular, and the track very slippery indeed down at the bus stop. Lots of teams coming in to make a driver change. The maximum you can do in one stint is 65 minutes, so there are lots of drivers hopping out, others getting in. And the circuit down at the bus stop is very slippery indeed. That is the end of 
for number 33 Porsche. The fire is out. It's also out of the race. It's raining at Spa. The predicted rain has come. The circuit is getting wetter and wetter. It's not too bad here at Eau Rouge, but look, this is what it's like on the start line. A replay of the McLaren going off. That's Julian Draper. A big whack into the tyres. He aquaplanes off the road, and he's not the only one in trouble. Roland Berville also slithers off the track. And this is everything solid. 41 Santelot Audi off by the side of the road of Robert Hissom. And then Phil Quaife in the 62 McLaren. The car started by Adam Christodoulou. That slides off. There are more in trouble. Michael Lyons, Ferrari, looks like the Kuhn Bouters, Mercedes off as well. And drivers really struggling because they're on slicks, of course, to keep the cars in a straight line. It's not too bad out on the far side of the circuit. But here at the start and finish area, the track is awash. The headlights are glowing brighter and the safety car has been deployed. Not surprising. You can see there just how much rain there is falling. And that's the run down towards Eau Rouge in the pit lane. Another car off. That is the Andrew Daniliv BMW. It's hit the pit wall, damaged the front right. And the Audi mechanics think it's time to go swimming. That BMW, I think, is going to go no further. And you can see why the safety car is out. There is so much water standing on the road. That's at Eau Rouge. You can barely see the curb. There's a water splash at the bottom of the hill. The rain has relented at Spa just enough to go racing once again. There are two safety cars in use because of the length of the lap and the size of the entry. So the first batch of cars released and in it is the number 16 Audi going rapidly at the moment in the hands of René Rast, but it's Maxime Martin in number three leading the way. Yeah, as we will he goes. Maxime Martin up front and he's on a very slippery track and it's called out one of the Porsches. That's Philippe Salini's car off coming out of Blanchimont. That's a huge hit. The safety car has been deployed once again. And that is a big, big impact. The car is in the middle of the road. Let's have a look. He just runs by out of Blanchimont onto the kerb and back into the concrete. That's a hard hit. Wheels are ripped off, bodywork ripped off. And Philippe Salini's car ends up on the track. And quite clearly the race cannot continue without the safety car while that Porsche is there. So. Marshall sprint towards it, the new GT3 homologated track clearance truck, he's heading in that direction as well, and the safety car could be on track for quite some time here. Well, one driver who's been going really well in his Audi GT3 debut is René Rast, he's in the pits with Haley. René, you guys have certainly had an impressive move through the traffic here today so far. What are your hopes for the rest of the race? My hopes are obviously that we, we finish the race first. I mean, it's very important to just do what we ever do, racing, and uh, we hope we can continue like we do at the moment. Very important to avoid crashes, to avoid mistakes. Um, we did so far. I mean, we are in second place at the moment. And yeah, it would be nice if we could uh, go on the podium tomorrow. And have you been enjoying racing here at Spa? Yeah, it's my first time and it was my first stint just uh, one hour ago and I enjoyed it very, very much and I'm very pleased with the car at the moment and I'm looking forward for the next hours. Thank you. So there you can see the field all queued up behind the safety car. The car that's been going really strongly so far is the Block Pound sponsored Lamborghini. The Block Pound guests enjoying themselves in the drive. Albert von Turner Taxis yet to drive. Albert, this year is certainly turning out to be much better than last year here for you. Well, so far, we, you can really say that because we've uh, progressed beyond one stint. So we've already made quite a bit of progress. And um, really, overall, it's running fantastically well so far. We've, um, we've had a very, very good strategy. Hans really made the right call in the right moment to switch to slicks. We had an advantage of the drying circuit for a couple of laps and um, switched back to rain tires in the, in the decisive moment as well. So you can really say that we've, um, so far, we've made all the right decisions. We're on P5 overall, we are leading the class. Very exciting, um, lots of pressure now for me. I'm about to jump into the car. So a bit scary, but a um, lot of fun, a lot of fun. Have you driven at night in Spa before? I have driven at night for a, a, a three laps yesterday and for three laps last year. So that's really all I can, uh, the, all the experience I bring. So it's a bit, it's a bit scary, never driven in the wet for sure at night. So, I guess a new experience. Best of luck, Albert. Thank you. 
out of the Pontono Taxis then soon to get into the Lamborghini. And we are back racing at Spa as the fireworks are let off. And that helps the drivers with just a little bit more visibility, a little bit more brightness in the air. On board with Frank Kettler, working his way through traffic. Dives up the inside of the back markers, including the DB Motorsport BMW there. 23, the United Auto Sports Audi that moves across. Whoops, contact. Frank Kettler survives. But that could have been a big, big moment for him. The race leader is Maxime Martin, and he too is working his way through traffic here. The number three BMW working its way around the outside of the Porsche, which gets in the way a little bit. Martin's next target is Mike Wainwright's McLaren that moves across on him, going down towards Poor. Wainwright spins. Off goes the McLaren, but did Maxime Martin survive? It looks as though he has, but I think Mike Wainwright there just completely misjudged where the corner was and turned in. There's a wheel off, there's a wheel across the track. And two McLarens have come to grief at the source. 62 is Klaus Hummel. Number five is Nico Verdon, the Pro-Am Cup class leader. Here's the replay. Hummel to the inside, bangs into the side of Nico Verdon. And that looks as though both cars are going to be out of the race. The wheel drifts across the road. Frank Kettler's car just misses it. But well, that's a disaster for Nico Verdon because that has just put him out, not only of the race, but of the Pro-Am Cup class lead. Drive-through penalty for the number four Mark VDS BMW. Henri Moser has exceeded the maximum driving time allowed. And here at Spa, the fans' attention now drifts from the track to the concert. A bright Sunday at Spa. Day two, if you like, of the Spa 24-hour race. Number 16 Audi of Andrea Piccini leads the way, but it has got a punctured tyre and Piccini is heading for the pit lane. The car looks undamaged, he's not done any damage to the bodywork, but he's got a limpid through the bus stop and then into the pit lane. Piccini with a puncture, the leader is in. The team goes to work, the Phoenix Motorsport team that runs cars in the DTM looking after this car for the weekend. As across the line comes the car that is chasing. Stefan Ortelli here goes back onto the lead lap in number one. The car was delayed in the night with a puncture. So it's one all between the two leading Audis, therefore. And Ortelli now back on the lead lap. But when 16 rejoins, we'll see what the gap is between the two of them. Third is number 66, the Vita 41 BMW. In fourth place at the moment is the number two. Belgian Audi Club WRT Audi and down to fifth is the number three Mark VDS Racing BMW that was leading at six hours. Well, in the night, Marcus Paltola has had to take his penalty. They've been hit by a Ferrari. They've been held as a red light in the pit lane while the safety car went through. They've had punctures and that all adds up to drop the car to fifth. Sixth and seventh is the Pro-Am Cup lead battle between the Ferrari 458 run by AF Corsa, chased by the Haribo Racing Porsche. That Porsche going really well at the moment, and I think it's going to be one to watch, in fact, as this Pro-Am class battle shapes up. There you can see the rest of the order, and out of the 66 cars starting a total of 24 hours of Spa, this fourth round of the Grand Prix Endurance Series, we have lost quite a few, and many have dropped back as well in the night with dramas such as the 17th place Grand Prix writer Lamborghini that had a wheel bearing issue. The order scrolls through. Some have lost time through accidents, some have lost bases through mechanical maladies. In some cars, we've lost altogether. 69 and 9, the two Gulf Racing UK McLarens have both been casualties of independent accidents. 47 McLaren crashed out of the night as well. 76 Porsche gone with a broken engine. Number 11 gone with an accident. 73 Ferrari gone with a lost wheel. And number 35 Nissan gone with electrical problems early yesterday evening. So right now, it's an Audi battle for honours in the Spa 24 hours. It is between the Phoenix team and Team WRT, the Belgian squad looking to win on home ground. And there is Pierre Giudone, the man behind Team WRT. A wheel off somebody's car there. That's at the bus stop. And into the pit lane comes an Aston Martin. That's the car with Damien Dupont on the wheel of it at the moment. And it went really strongly early on in the race. And the car was being driven by Bertrand Baguette. It stopped on the track with an electrical issue, but other than that, it's gone really well. Hans Guido Regal here at speed in his Porsche. Pro-Am car turning its way through Montchamont. And a lap ago, he had a real moment coming through the bus stop. We're on board with him, out of Montchamont. Up now towards the bus stop. 
225 kilometres an hour down to 50, hard on the brakes, turn in, get back on the power for the run up to the next bit of the bus stop, and as he does so, round comes the back and he's on the lock stops as he tries to control the Porsche. He does control it, a job well done, and it comes across the line. Problems here for Maxime Martin, the car won't leave the pit lane, they're having to rock it. Now will it not start, is it jammed in gear, is it a clutch problem? Well either way, number three BMW has got problems and if this is going to happen at every pit stop in the remaining six hours and change then this is going to stack up to be a real, real disaster for the BMW team. Frank Kettler is hustling on in the number 66 BMW and a place on the podium is a real possibility. This is the car of Kettler, Greg Frangic and Matthias Lauda and the way that it's going at the moment suggests that it's going to be a real good candidate for third place. It's battling with the number two Audi, the car of Lawrence Van Thor, Edward Sandstrom and Marco Bonanomi and the BMW dives to the inside to get past the Lamborghini there. A three-wheel Ferrari is off the road, that's the Kessel Racing car of Daniel Zampieri and there's its wheel that's come to join the car. Pierre, it looks like that's the day done. And John Gore's Aston Martin has got the same problem. The safety car's been deployed again. That's the second time in the race I think that car's lost a wheel. The safety car is out. That's Tom Christensen you're riding with. On board, he's got the mirror in his hand. What are you going to do with it? Oh, that's the answer. Window's open. Comes up towards the bus stop. Lob, straight out of the window. It's detached itself somehow. And out goes the mirror. Safety car back in the pit lane. We're racing again here at Spa. Now this safety car period has given us a lead battle with the cars being just nose to tail. Look, coming up towards Le Con, we've got a McLaren in the way, but there, flashing his lights, is Frank Schnipper right up behind him, and on the kerb, it's Christopher Hassa. He runs wide, going into Le Con, well, over the kerb, over the rumble strip, and that is going to take the gap away from being tenths of a second to getting on for ten seconds. Number two Audi in the pit lane. Now that's the Edward Sandstrom car. It's going to be a distant pad change, new tyres, they've refuelled it, Sandstrom's behind the wheel. And that car, ready to go, you can't drive straight out of the garage, you have to be on the pit apron and leave from there. Sandstrom blasts away in the Audi. At the end of the pit lane, number two has come to a halt look. The number two Audi has stopped in the fast lane of the pits. You can see Sandstrom in the car, he's looking at something, either his belts or the ignition, but he's got the car going. Edward Sandstrom back into the race, but more time lost as a pit later. That's going to help the Vita 4-1 team. There's Mikhail Bartels, furthest away from us, he runs the team. He's going to be delighted to see this because it gives his BMW more of a chance to take the place. Sandstrom is off! Edward Sandstrom is off the road at the top of Eau Rouge in a big, big way. There's damage to the back of the car, there's damage to the front. The Viper there leaving the pit lane from the Gentleman Trophy. And a very worried team and a very disappointed Marco Bonanomi who knows that the race is at an end after all their hard work. So we've lost an Audi, Edward Soundstrom off at Eau Rouge and that was a big impact by the look of it. Yeah, Giordano there, who's won this race as a driver knows that it's not going to be a win for this car this year. Here's the replay. Now look at the amount of kerb taken, not at that part, but this part of the corner. It rides the kerb, it unsettles the car and round comes the back. A big impact into the tyres. Let's look from another angle at the point of impact. That's a huge hit. Backwards into the tyres, it spins round, damages the front and the rear of the car. And although Edward Sandstrom should be okay, they're big, strong cars, the car is out of the race. So the safety car lights out, I think, any moment. We should be back to racing very soon indeed. Now, the light is still on, but it won't be long, I think, before we go back to the green flag. Information to the teams. Safety cars will withdraw at the end of this lap. Safety cars will withdraw at the end of this lap. Just over three and a half hours of the race remaining. We are back in business and the number 16 Audi now having dropped into second place, working its way in the hands of Rene Rast, past Uwe Alpsen's Porsche. Audi number 16 carving its way back onto the tail of the number one Audi. 
The lead being traded as the pit stops unwind. The third place, BMW, number 66, Kefler, Lauda and Greg Forshi, last year's winner. They're not going to catch the Audis, I don't think, but this team should be good for the podium. And Pro-Am is being led here by 52. Alessandro Piedridi, Andrea Bertolini, Nick Thomason, Lou Matthews, the drivers. And if they can win the class, it'll be two in a row within the Grand Prix Endurance Series because the car was the winner of the class last time out at Paul Ricard. Now, number one, Audi continues on its way up front, but the gap is coming down relentlessly between it and number 16. Rene Rast and Frank Schnippler seem to be splitting the driving between them at the moment in number 16. There's not very much of Andrea Puccini getting back into it after his puncture this morning. Puccini seemingly being kept out of the car, but you can see the way the gap's coming down now. Audi number one versus Audi number 16. They are not quite together, but they're not far apart, that's for sure. Coming out of Pouin, through goes number one. And the Haas, Nice or Tele car leads the Puccini, Rast, Schnippler entry. Belgian team ahead of German team out of the pit path and the gap continues to come down and down you can see what it's come down by over the last few laps Rast and Schnippler are giving this absolutely everything Schnippler on the tail of number one as they come to the bus stop he's going to make the move on the inside is he yes number 16 Audi takes up the lead and that is on pace it's not by on pit stops, that is on a very quick driver in a very quick car, working his way onto the tail of number one. He's caught, he's passed, and now Stippler tries to pull away. Back to the inside though, goes the number one Audi, but still it cannot find a way through. And now Frank Stippler should be able to break away, but of course the Audi battle without Edward Sandstrom. Edward, it's certainly great to see you back here and all is okay. Can you tell us what actually happened on track? Uh, I think uh, I had first I had a little bit of a problems in the pit with this with the seat belts. It was not um, correctly mounted and uh, I think I got a bit unconcentrated at this time of, of this race. Yeah, it's uh, quite uh, difficult to not be a little bit tired and uh, I got a bit frustrated. So just going to replay it here for you. I think I go down to Rouge and I think I'm I'm trying a bit too much too early with new tires. I go quite sharp in and when I see now I I hit the inside curb too hard and uh, it unsettles the, the cars quite heavily and uh, and um, yeah you can see I have a, a very heavy impact with the with the tire wall and for sure I don't want to be in the car at that moment but Happily enough, the Audi was very safe and the seat and everything worked uh, really, really, really good. So that's the only good case with this situation. So, but I'm happy for that. Thank you, Edward. The safety car is back out again. The safety car is on track, and there is the reason there's a Ferrari off at Blanchimont, very high speed part of the circuit back. And it looks like it's the Lorenzo Bontempelli, Kessel Racing Ferrari, that had a puncture early in the race. Here's the replay. Way off he goes. The car sits down almost like a tyre has let go. And bang, into the tyre barrier. And that just launches in a complete roll. Thankfully, it lands four wheels the right way down and the roof the right way up. And Lorenzo Bontempelli is out of the car. There he is at the front of it, helmet in hand. But in the last 50 minutes of the race, he's crashed out. We're under the safety car, the 16th deployment of the safety car in the race. A late call under the safety car by Stefan Ortelli to come into the pit lane. He had one more pit stop to make. In has come the Audi. It's going to be fuel. But Ortelli is held at the end of the pit lane until the queue has gone through. So a lot of time has been lost there by the number one Audi. There is Ortelli, he is back on track, but rather than gain time under the safety car, it has lost the car time. We've also had news of a drive-through penalty for Stefan Ortelli. That late decision to come into the pit lane meant that he crossed the white line, which you are not allowed to do, so Ortelli will get a drive-through, and that loses any chance of a race win. The Lamborghini looking a bit smoky, Mark Hayek at the wheel of it. 
There's Hans Reiter, the team boss, having a look at the car and saying, no, you should be OK to get to the end of the race now. The leaders come through onto the last lap of the Spa 24 hours. Frank Schnippler leads Stefan Ortelli. The two leading cars on nose to tail, but only on track. There is a lap between them now. And you can see behind is the number six Audi with Andre Lotter at the wheel. That car having been 63rd after its long pit stop after damage with the 62 McLaren is up into sixth place. A great recovery. And Audi now getting the cars ready for the formation finish. Mercedes needs to be passed first of all. But the Audi team now getting ready for a second successive Spa 24 hour victory. The first one came last year, the first in the history of Audi. The winning is brand here is BMW, 21 wins, many from the European Touring Car Championship era. And the best of the BMWs in this race is third at the moment, the Vita 4-1 car. Well, apart from a little bit of damage in the night with the slower cars and a puncture this morning, number 16 has gone like clockwork. And Frank Schnippler has done a huge amount of the driving today. He is going to be a very tired driver, I'm sure. Never mind the fact that it's a 24-hour race, but he's not had much respite today. Andrea Piccini has not really been in the car a great deal and Schnippler is close on doing the maximum allowed under the regulations. Stefano Telli through on the inside. He gets past the Black Falcon racing Mercedes. He's chased by Andre Lotra and the Audis now start to queue up ready for the formation finish. We've had sunshine, we've had rain, we've had proper great racing, we've had lots of accidents, lots of incident. We've had places traded on the track, places traded in the pit stops, we've had penalties, we've had controversy, we've had everything that makes the Spa 24 hours a truly great race. Cars coming up towards the Paul Frere corner, the last time named after the great Belgian journalist and racing driver, and then towards Bonchimar, then towards the bus stop. And although the race started at the endurance pit, it will finish at the F1 pit, so straight out of the bus stop, the checkered flag will be waved, and the Audi team gets ready to celebrate. The 2012 Spa 24 hours is going to be won by Audi, by Andrea Piccini, René Rast, and the man behind the wheel of the number 16 car, Frank Schnippler, comes out of the bus stop, accelerates up towards the line, for the second year in a row, Audi wins the Spa 24 hours. It's an Audi 1-2 as they come across the line. The sixth place Audi getting in on the act as well, driven by Andre Lotra. And in the background, you can see Jose Close's Ford Mustang that has expired just in front of the timing line. The celebrations begin for Audi. It's two wins in a row in the Spa 24 hours. Frank Stippler helped Audi to win the Nürburgring 24 hours this year. And, of course, a different sort of Audi altogether won the Le Mans 24 hours. Jose Close has just about got the Mustang over the timing line. And after all of that, the car is not classified. It has not done enough distance. There's a delighted looking Rene Rast. And Andrea Piccini, you can see that. About to be embraced and congratulated. And in the midst of all of that somewhere, ready to have a word with the drivers, is Hayley Cox. And Hayley, they're all yours. Andrea, congratulations! Thank you, thank you. It was about time. After 10 years trying to win this race, uh, I'm very happy for all the boys because they did an incredible job. And you had fun doing it? Yeah, yeah, it's been very hard, especially last night when the conditions were very difficult, but uh, now we won, so that's, uh, that's important. So thanks to Audi, thanks to, to Phoenix. I'm very happy for all the guys. Thank you. Andrea. Last corner of the last lap, Frank Kettler has got a puncture and he spins. Round goes the BMW. Well, he's not going to park it, that's for sure, not within sight of the flag. So Frank Kettler brings the car up to the line, the pole position man for Vita 4-1, finishes in third place along with Matthias Lauda and Greg Franchi. Drama right to the very end of the race, a race won by Audi. Let's hear the thoughts of Dr Wolfgang Lurie. Yeah, it was a perfect weekend at the end, uh, with uh, having the two cars in front uh, of both of the teams, uh, and at the end even having the third car with our guys from Le Mans, that made it from the last place after one hour to place number six, I think, an impressive comeback, and uh, yeah, just a great result for Audi, and uh, the teams really did a great job, and that is the reward. Thank you.
Congratulations. And with Dr. Rooney, there is Werner Froheim, the outgoing boss of the Quattro part of Audi's motorsport activity. A great retirement present. This a win, indeed a 1 2 for Audi at Spa. As an exhausted French Dippler, a very tall German driver, uncoils himself from the Audi R8 LMS Ultra, the new for 2012 car. Stefan Rotelli, the first man to congratulate him. And what a result. Frank Schnippler wins the Nervo in 24 hours. He wins the Spa 24 hours as well. Frank Schnippler undoes his crash helmet. Andrea Piccini and Rene Rast will be there shortly, no doubt, to congratulate him. Balaclava comes off. Let's hear from the winner, Frank Schnippler. Frank, congratulations, you are the winner of the total 24 hour of Spa. How does that feel? Unbelievable. I mean, the start was quite difficult because we were on uh, 28th position. And uh, with this uh, kind of strong competitors, it was uh, yeah, really difficult to get through the field. We had three or four times contact with other cars. And uh, for that reason, some issues uh, about the wheel bearing and so on. At least uh, the Audi R8 was a tank. And I'm very, I'm very thankful. Thank you. I'll leave you to get a drink, Frank. Congratulations, thank you. There's Rene Rast who comes along to congratulate and say thanks to Frank Schnippler. Andrea Piccini likewise. Frank Schnippler has done the bulk of the work in that car and it is a well-deserved win for him. Frank Schnippler. The winner, Stefan Rotelli, finishing second. Stefan, congratulations. A podium finish for you. Not quite the win that you were battling for with your teammate, but still a great result for you. Uh, it's an amazing day. Uh, for me, uh, it was uh, such a pleasure to drive this car. And I've got two extremely very talented young drivers. They've been doing an excellent job. We didn't put a foot wrong, and uh, I think uh, we had just been beaten by uh, better than us. And uh, congratulations to Phoenix, but also to us, to WRT. I mean, we are here, last year first, this year second. I mean, uh, we can be proud for us and we can be proud for Audi. Bravo, bravo, guys. Thank you, Stefan. Stefan Ortelli has won this race before for Porsche back in 2003. He knows what it's like to be on the top step of the podium. And you can see just how tired Frank Schnittler is. He has done so much driving in a very hot car on a pretty hot day. It's, uh, yes, it's been uh, not as uh, sunny as yesterday for the first hour of the race. Thankfully, no rain, but even so, he has been a very busy man behind the wheel of the car today. And with Andrea Puccini and Rene Rast, it's time to catch his breath. Sit on the floor, take on some liquid, and then head to the podium. Let's have a look at the results. 66 cars started, 33 classified as finishers, a 1 2 for Audi. The results headed by Puccini, Rast, and Stippler. Second going the way of Stefan Ortelli and the Christophers, Hassa and Mies. Third to the best of the BMWs. It's the Vita 41 car of Lauda, Franchi and Kettler. And Mark VDS Racing, after a race that started so well, ends up with four, Paltola, Linders and Martin. Fifth to win their class, Thomas and Matthews, Bertolini and Piaguidi. And sixth from 63rd, Fassler, Christensen and Lotra. Seventh and second in Pro-Am, the Haribo Racing Team Porsche of Regal, Sturzberg, Metzler and Elson. Eighth is the better of the two soft red Ferraris, the car of Olivier Panis, along with Fabian Barthez, Eric Devar and Morgan Moulin Trapor. Ninth, the best of the McLarens, of Perrin, Barr, Ludwig and Wills. And rounding out the top ten, Bobili, Guela, Vede and Vautier, with Mark Hayek, Lamborghini, the car shared by Peter Cox and Jos Menton, two winners of the race in the past, and Albert Monson and Taxis, they come home at 11. Other cars of note, lower down the order, is, for example, 17th, the first motorsport Porsche. That car, having started on the back row of the grid, wins Gentleman Trophy, but comes home in 17th place, a remarkable effort. 25th is the Speed Lover Porsche, that wins the Cup class for the older machinery. The cars you can see here, those that failed to get to the finish. Number 57, having gone out with broken suspension. Number 7 Porsche, out with a broken gearbox. 32 Porsche out after an accident. Number 15 out with damage. Number 5, an accident. So many of the teams have really been in the wars during the course of this race. The Jaguar went out with electrical problems. But Audi comes home victorious.
from 28th on the grid to first. A win in the total 24 hours of Spa for Rene Rast, Andrea Piccini and Frank Schnippler. The one pound German series continues. Still two more rounds to go. The last is at Navarra. The next stop for the teams, though, is at the Nürburgring in September. And the AF Corsa team here will be looking to make it three class wins in a row in Pro-Am. It's been a tremendous race, a real classic in the tradition of the Spa 24 hours. From Hayley Copson and me, David Addison, goodbye from Belgium.